Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Boric, and so far I have been one for one on series predictions. Maybe I should hit Vegas. But the Bridgeport Islanders did take down the Providence Bruins in the best of three first playing round. So now they are going to go to take on the Charlotte Checkers with a lot of time off because that series does not start until next Tuesday. So, let's get right into it, though, as the Bridgeport Islanders win two thrillers. Talk about winning in the most thrilling fashion. They win two games in overtime. And also, it must be pointed out that for the goal to Grant Hudden in the first game, that was a beautiful play of puck possession by Otto Koivula to keep the puck on his blade, keep the puck in possession of the Islanders, as it looked like, they were doing a line change, and then be able to get it in front to Hudden, and Hudden had a beautiful snipe there as well. So beautifully done to get it over Grossnick by Hudden, and beautifully done by Koivula to keep it in the zone. And then, for the winning goal in this game, <clears throat> uh, Dorando was able to win, and guess who had the assist? The hero of Game 2, Atu Ratu. Uh, as he was able to get the assist. Salo, the AHL veteran, had the other assist. As Durando was able to score as, as Groznik kind of got caught. And he came around the net and was able to put it in smartly. A very aware play by Durando there. And then Jacob Luko, who was another star of the game, was able to score for the P Bruins in this game. What you saw from the Islanders and kind of Brett Thompson's team all season, which is why I really liked them as a playoff-style, experienced team. And so far, they haven't even had to necessarily fully rely on their experience. They've had a lot of the young guys step up, like, for example, the Ratus, like, for example, um, the Durandus. Um, So <clears throat> it's been nice to not have to see even the... Chris Terry obviously had a great series, but it's been nice to not have to see all those guys like the Currys, Zarnix, Ladus, all those AHL veterans. They didn't even need those guys fully yet in this series. You had all these other guys being able to get it. Obviously, Hudden's been around for a quick bit, but you know what I'm saying. Those guys that have been around and played hundreds of games, they didn't even fully need them yet because these young guys are playing great, like Koivula, uh, like Atu Ratu. So, I mean, the, the that's huge for the Providence Bruins, or not the Providence, that's huge for the Bridgeport Islanders to have that against the Providence Bruins, I should say. And going forward, that's going to be big for them against the Checkers. If they can get this depth scoring, they have the veterans, as I'll do that series preview sometime this weekend because it's not until Tuesday, but they have the veterans to match up against some of the star studs of that team. I don't know if I'm going to have a chance. I don't think I'm going to be able to choose them over them, but we'll have to see as I do my analysis and start watching a bunch of old games of each team. Usually that's how I do that when I pick some of these series previews here. But when it comes to the Islanders, they did what's expected of them. They were able to, if you looked at the P Bruins, they had a lot. Well, also, I have to say, Corey Schneider played like a freaking beast in this series also. Because game one, the the Islanders, I don't think, did as good as they wanted to. They were kind of a land of opportunists where, in their shots, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine in high percentage scoring chances and were able to capitalize on two. So they were the lands of opportunists where if you look at the P Bruins, they had like one, two, three, four, like in the teens, uh, but before the faceoff dot and the shot even with the faceoff dot, and then they kind of kept them to the outside, and they were only able to capitalize on one, and a big part of that was because Corey Schneider was absolutely spectacular. I mean, take a look at the shot chart in game one. He made... If you just look at that a couple of key saves without watching the freaking game, and then from watching the game, this man looked like he was back to his old school reflexes like he was in his Devils days. He's been a great AHL goalie. It's been nice to see. It's cool to see players like Snyder that don't have their whole career kind of fizzle by the wayside when they can't still make it in the NHL but have a great AHL story as well. And you got to see that from him in these first two games. And then in the second game, I thought Bridgeport did a great job offensively. In the first game... I thought, obviously, like I said, they were kind of the land of opportunists uh, as they were able to score both of those goals as Hudden was able to get the snipe. Same with Durando. They finished with 32 shots in the end, but they did let Providence generate a lot of chances. That's why I think Schneider was an MVP of Game 1. In Game 2, Schneider was very good as well. 
But what was a bigger noticing thing in this game is also Del Call started the scoring on the great shot by Terry. There's the two veterans coming into it. And Austin Zarnick, who I still think has a chance to be an NHL player as a late bloomer, uh, were able to get the assist to Michael Del Col. Nick Wolf then coming in on the play, the defensive defenseman, was able to get one from Yuna Kopanen. And then Johnny Beecher, the former Michigan stud. Uh, was able to get the assist to Nick Wood. Wolf, a great third-line center just by default with Michigan, is what Beecher was. But <clears throat> in this game, before we get to the brilliant last goal assisted by McLean and Austin Zarnick to be a star of the game and get his second assist, I'm not sure how he wasn't a star of the game in general with how well he played that game in the actual game, but I'm giving him a star of the game. Uh, Troy Grosnick played good for Providence in this game. And obviously Corey, the main man, Snyder, played good as well. Uh, they said the attendance was over 5,000, good good attendance there in Total Mortgage Arena. But what I really liked about this game was, if you look at it, all of a sudden, Bridgeport rided that momentum from the OT game one win to really keep the pea brewing to the outside this time. Like, if you look at this thing, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, about six, and then if you want to count the two even with the faceoff, that eight shots that were in pretty good zones for the P Bruins, the rest of them were all more towards the outside in this game, and Bridgeport was able to be very good at scoring, obviously, the one slot goal that they were able to get there in this game to start off the scoring on the rebound by Del Cole, as he was able to put that one back in, and then the Atu Ratu goal in overtime was actually not even, that wouldn't be considered a money zone shot, that was a just very good pass drop back and he just fired that so quickly uh, that Grosnick didn't have any time to react to it and Atu Ratu was able to just put that one in they called him I thought it was Atu Rati but but they called him Atu Ratu on Bridgeport's broadcast uh but I I always thought it was Atu Rati but either way he's an absolute stud prospect that just ended up dropping in the draft because he wasn't as sweet in his, his draft year kind of reminds you of someone like a Clark in this year's draft. That's why it's going to be interesting to see how those guys do, because I still think they have a chance to be heck of players. It's just they want the sexiest going into the draft year, so then somebody gets a steal, and the Islanders got him. Maybe they even get Clark. We'll have to see. But Rati, or Ratu, however the heck you want to say it, was able to win this game. Brilliant shot by him on the pass by Kyle McLean as he was able to drop it off. Zarnik was able to start up the play have his second assist of the day. Great job by the Islanders to play just perfectly to their system. In the first game, yes, there was some bumps in the road that Corey Schneider had to be a freaking stud in, but then Brent Thompson's team really, I thought, played to their strengths, kept them to the outside, didn't let them get a lot of chances on the inside. The only big one uh, that obviously bit them in the butt was when Nick Wolf was able to crash, but Nick Wolf is also, <clears throat> as I said, more of a defensive defenseman, so you probably don't anticipate that, and it caught you off guard. But great job by the Bridgeport Islanders. Great job to win this series by Bridgeport. Overall fantastic series. A great goaltender's battle in each game, and that's what I love watching. I'm a huge goalie analysis guy, as you can probably tell from some of the videos on my channel. I don't get the opportunity to do enough. But this was a fun series for me because I love watching series that are like pitchers' duels in hockey, and that's what this was, a goalie duel. And Corey Schneider came out on top twice but also because of Koivula making a great play in the first game that was able to get the first goal. They were able to get that OT goal from Durandu, and then a great play by Terry to get the Del Col goal, and then they were able to get the great goal by Rati, who did not seem phased at all, getting an assist in Game 1, and getting a goal in Game 2 after only playing, I believe it was two games, maybe three in the regular season. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or up above on the Easy News Richard to keep channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. It's been a great start to the playoffs for the experienced with good young talent, Bridgeport Islanders, with Rati as being the best stud there as the youngsters. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team goes. Koivula also playing fantastic. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.